England has, for centuries, been long reputed as having some of the most haunted buildings and locations in the world. And with a history saturated in glories as well as horrendous bloodshed, it's hardly surprising. It's estimated that 40% of English people believe in ghosts and the supernatural, and one in seven people claim to have seen one. It's certainly true to say that spirits have long been a source of intrigue and fascination for the English, evoking the imagination to create countless stories, films and plays dedicated to the subject. To the east of Fareham, in the English county of Hampshire, stands the magnificent Porchester Castle. Thought to be found in the late 11th century, this vast baronial castle was taken under royal control in 1154. A favourite hunting lodge of King John, Porchester was captured by the French in 1216, before being returned to English control soon after. During the medieval period, Porchester played a vital role and the castle itself witnessed several attempts of capture by the French. In fact, Edward II spent £1,100 restoring and reinforcing the castle to its full potential and majesty in grave anticipation of a French invasion. Surrounded by bounteous natural beauty and a coastline envied by many nations, Porchester Castle plays host to several spectres whose chilling appearances have alarmed many visitors and castle staff alike. One of the most frequent ghostly inhabitants of the castle is the apparition of a mysterious monk. Dressed in a black robe and hood, the monk has been seen countless times in the castle's spectacular grounds, wandering passively around the outside of the castle walls as if looking for something or someone. One eyewitness described an overwhelming sensation of serenity upon seeing the monk. She recalled feeling a strong sense of harmony at his presence. He seemed to acknowledge her as he made direct eye contact with her, but he simply faded away before her eyes. If only all of Porchester's castle's supernatural residents were quite so serene. An employee of Porchester Castle reported seeing a manifestation of a terrifying horseman galloping towards her one summer's evening inside the castle grounds. Sheila Sace told sources that, As the apparition grew in size, it started to come towards me and I screamed and ran away. My colleague saw it too, over my shoulder. It was a long, low, jet-black shape with four legs and a horse's head and it projected a very bad feeling. Exactly what it is that keeps these lost and tortured souls here remains a mystery, as though somehow they are doomed to remain trapped in a cruel limbo between life and the afterlife. Many believe apparitions are forced to roam between the living and the dead by means of a harsh punishment for unspeakable evil acts they committed in this life. But if this can really be true, how is it that the poor monk is trapped in such a horrendous situation after dedicating his mortal life to God? Sadly, we just don't know. Perhaps the monk embarked on unholy activities in this life and has been forbidden to enter the kingdom of heaven. So many questions remain unanswered. Another alarming account was that of a young boy who came into the castle's shop with a video for Sheila's attention. It transpired that the boy had been messing about late one night without his parents' knowledge at the castle and was curious to see if Sheila could determine a peculiar, prominent sound on the tape. Sheila instantly recognised the unmistakable sound of a horse's hooves galloping over concrete. The exact same heart-racingly terrifying noise she had witnessed herself on that fateful day. Frighteningly, there had been no horses anywhere near the castle that evening of the boy's recording. Not any living ones, at any rate. Located within the castle's opulent grounds sits the famous graveyard of St Mary's Church. The graveyard is host to a gathering of terrifying souls who have scared some visitors half to death. Searching amongst the gravestones is the spirit of a raven-haired woman who is reportedly seen numerous times by unsuspecting visitors to the castle. The striking woman is described by several eyewitnesses as being gaunt and deathly pale in the face. She is described as being incredibly attractive, 
wearing a headpiece which eyewitnesses have all described as exactly the same. A headband consisting of large and small roses. The spectre always appears to see the visitor and some accounts tell of her walking towards them as if to speak to them. The graveyard to this day remains the object of fascination with its renowned affiliation with the occult, including animal sacrifice. With such grisly goings-ons, who could be in any doubt of the great unrest plaguing the castle and all whom visit? Perhaps the most remarkable and spine-chilling of all is the terrifying spectre of the White Lady. Witnessed by many locals and visitors, this tragic figure is believed to be the tormented soul of one Charlotte White. Charlotte is said to have drowned in the most macabre way in the castle's moat, which surrounds the castle during the Victorian era. Charlotte had been with her young baby when the child fell into the moat. Desperate and frantic, Charlotte had jumped in after her child, but got into difficulty which led to both mother and child drowning. Charlotte's furious, vengeful spirit has been seen regularly ever since. One gentleman had been visiting the castle as a tourist from New Zealand when he had broken away from a tour group he was part of. He reported experiencing an all-encompassing urge to break free of the group and walk around, alone by the moat. As the man walked around towards the moat, he bore witness to a most terrible sight, that of a remarkably beautiful lady he described as appearing almost pre-Raphaelite in appearance dressed completely in white, long white dress blowing in the wind, throwing herself from the keep. Unsurprisingly, shocked and shaken by what he'd seen, the tourist sprinted to where he saw the lady fall. Certain in his mind he was about to be met with a sad and grim discovery, to find nothing. Convinced he'd seen a woman take her own life, the shaken and confused man ran frantically into the castle to inform staff of what he'd just witnessed and that they should phone the police without delay. Castle staff looked at each other with a knowing look and informed the man that this is an identical account so many others had reported to them and that it was, in fact, the spirit of a lady. Unconvinced, the skeptical tourist insisted a full search of the castle and its grounds was undertaken which it was. Nobody was found on sight. On walking her dog around the grounds, a common routine for another eyewitness, a local woman was left terribly shaken and inconsolable after being confronted by the white lady frantically running almost into her on the path. Dressed entirely in white, the woman came hurtling towards her from nowhere waving both arms desperately in the air and shrieking to the top of her lungs in a pitch the witness described as like that of a banshee or fatally wounded animal. The witness went on to add that the woman's eyes were wide and the distress made her very blood turn cold. A shiver ran down her entire body as the woman projected this excruciating pain. The witness explained how the ghostly woman had ran right up to her face she could physically feel her skin on her cheek, reminiscent of an ice cube being held against the skin. But the howling, the howling, it was the most painful noise she had ever heard. So much so, the witness spoke of how it felt as though her ears were bleeding. The witness's dog seemed to see her also, as he incessantly growled and barked at the spectre in defense of his owner. Breathless, the witness described how she felt drained, terrified and faint. A passerby found the witness and walked her home to safety after her ordeal. The woman in white certainly appears to revel in inflicting mental and emotional anguish on innocent passers-by, including one elderly couple who were disturbed by the ear-piercing wails of a woman and a crying infant on the grassy walk surrounding the castle. One thing we can safely ascertain is that ghosts are resilient things. Their overwhelming desire to remain a part of our world seems as strong as ours to understand exactly why and how they have come to be. 
Another castle determined to install feelings of terror to mortals is situated in the heart of Northumberland, the exceptional Chillingham Castle. Originally erected as a monastery in the late 12th century, King Edward I resided at the castle en route to Scotland to do battle with an army led by the infamous William Wallace, the subject of the blockbuster film Braveheart. Similarly to Porchester Castle, Chillingham occupied a strategically important location during medieval times. Located on the border between two bitterly feuding nations, it was repeatedly attacked by Scottish armies heading south. Boasting intimidating and shocking dungeons and torture chambers, it's perhaps no great surprise that this castle plays host to a number of spectres, especially when you take the time to consider the inventive and downright repugnant methods used to torture the enemy. Prisoners would have had their legs and arms snapped broken before being thrown down a 20-foot hole into the infamous oubliette, where the condemned would simply be left to rot in the most exquisite agony. Cannibalism was another repulsive, stomach-churning consequence of this cruelty. Prisoners found gorging on the rotting, stinking, foul flesh of the deceased in a futile bid to extend their lives. One understandably shaken-up visitor reported a heart-stopping apparition of a young girl, almost green of face, sunken, forlorn eyes glaring up at him through the cold, murky grate of the oubliette. The torture chamber is as deranged as it is skillfully engineered, featuring a sloped floor designed in such a way to enable the blood of the captured to be drained away down one side of the room. The torturer of the day was a vile, brutal man by the name of John Sage. Sage was hugely admired and revered as a huge celebrity of the time. Previously one of King Edward's finest men in the battlefield, he had earned the title of lieutenant until injury forced him to cease fighting. The cruel and sinister Sage was appointed the position of castle torturer, a role he would revel in and passionately enjoy as this meant inflicting the most heinous of crippling acts on the Scots, the people Sage viewed with utter hatred and malice. Such was his insatiable lust for bloodshed, he would torture onwards of 50 people a week throughout his occupancy in the role. To this day, you can still view the gruesome torture devices Sage enlisted including a barrel filled with spikes designed to roll a captive around in until the flesh ripped from his body. It is, then, very likely that the countless reports of pained, agonizing screams are a direct result of the presence of these tormented souls accursed to wonder among us. A famous lost soul reported to haunt Chillingham is known as the Blue Boy, a vision of a young boy is said to roam the castle surrounded by a light radiating around him. He was reportedly seen by a German lady who was touring the castle with her elderly mother. The lady was appalled to see that the young lad had no fingers on his hands. Many believe this was due to the desperate attempt of escape the child endured to escape his frightful captivity. Thought to be a friendly spirit, the boy is believed to be there to warn others not to approach for fear of the horrors that lie within the castle. Walled up in the castle, the poor boy's body was found with some ragged blue cloth, believed to be his clothing. Any such relief in kindly spirit visitation is soon dissolved by the most famous ghost of Chillingham, the soul of Lady Mary Barclay, the wife of Lord Grey of Walk and Chillingham. The troubled spirit of Mary's burdened ghost scours the castle seeking her treacherous husband who left her for her own sister. A recent visitor to the castle regaled an account of feeling the distinct presence of a woman standing beside her. The witness explained that she even heard the rustling of a heavy dress or skirts pass by her and an icy hand clawed at her neck. The woman went on to explain that there was a tremendous sensation of pure grief and hatred filling the room, as though it were a visual liquid slowly filling the room to capacity. 
In her unease and fright, the lady was forced to vacate the room and in doing so, she felt a distant shove from behind as the ghost forced her out of the way. Another utterly chilling report is the sighting of a ghostly figure of a lady said to step out from an old family portrait. This ghost seems to enjoy tormenting children in particular, as we have heard so many accounts from them. One young child recently became so terrified at the sighting of this ghost, she screamed and bawled until her parents relented and took her home. Disturbingly still, this ghost is said to take her fixation with terrorizing people so far. She even impersonates tour guides and has even been known to exchange words with visitors who usually only understand what has just happened when the genuine tour guide materializes. A cantankerous spirit, certainly, driven to inflict unsolicited mind games on all those who bear witness to her. Mischievous spirits appear to be a theme at Chillingham, and it undoubtedly deserves its chilling name. There have been reports of people being pushed down staircases whilst on the balcony, of experiencing a melancholy so severe they felt desperately compelled to jump from the balcony onto the cold, hard concrete below. It's hardly fanciful to suggest whoever these tormented souls are, they mostly do not want the living around. They appear to insist on being left alone to continue on this thick veil of misery, fear and isolation leaving behind such a sense of emptiness, something so tragically unfinished, emotions and passions refusing to pass on. Ghostly whispering of two men can be heard in the library, and it's often reported that once the spirit is aware of a mortal presence, they suddenly fall deathly silent so as not to be overheard. About a mile east of the west coastal town of Ravenglass in Cumbria stands the breathtakingly striking Muncaster Castle. Surrounded by copious amounts of lush green trees, this remarkable castle is also home to some of Britain's most famous ghosts. Thomas Skelton, otherwise known as Tom Fool, was a malevolent, spiteful, murderous jester based at the castle. Known for sitting beneath a chestnut tree on the castle grounds, Skelton would indulge his hateful passion of directing passers-by into an undetectable area of quicksand, situated by the nearby cliffs when they dared ask him for directions. There was no escape for these doomed souls, and they would sink down to a horrific death caused by Skelton. Tom Fool was the most vindictive of characters. As to the untrained eye, he was but a mere friendly, uplifting soul who lived to entertain and amuse. Who could have imagined the depths of depravity Tom Fool really was amassing? Skelton's spirit remains just as dark and depraved as it was in life. In many ways, perhaps even more so. Although rarely seen, his menacing spirit still plagues visitors arriving to explore the castle's rich history. One recent account is that of a young man visiting with friends. The young man was stood quietly looking at a portrait of Skelton when he was unnerved by somebody creeping up on him, getting ready to pounce. He had vividly heard these footsteps approaching, fully expecting to spin around on his heels to be confronted with his friends playing a harmless practical joke on him to make him jump, the young man was shaken to find nobody there at all. Staff of the castle have reported plenty of similar stories. One employee had to go home in shock after being followed by ghostly footsteps for over half an hour. She was prompted to ask, who's there, when a red, stitched leather ball came flying toward her head only to vanish before smacking her in the face. The woman was adamant it was the spirit of Tom Skelton. The tapestry room of the castle is said to be heavily occupied with spirits. A crying child is often heard howling for a mother he just cannot seem to locate. A singing lady is also heard in the same room, although not thought to be the child's mother, as it never appears to reach solace in being comforted or soothed. Freezing rooms of intrigue and unease are rife in Muncaster, and the gardens are no exception. The Muncaster White Lady is said to walk the castle ground, believed to be the ghost of Mary Bragg, 
a brutally murdered young woman in the early 1800s. One recent account of Mary is taken from an American tourist and his wife visiting the castle on holiday with their teenage daughter. While exploring the grounds, the gentleman's daughter had fallen behind, examining some old stoneworks on the ground. Curious to see what was so fascinating his daughter, the tourist and his wife returned to where their daughter was to find her arched over forwards reading an inscription on the stone. As her mother asked what it was that was so interesting, the girl looked up and the parents gasped as they realised that although dressed entirely the same as their daughter, same clothing, bandana in hair, everything, she had an entirely different face. Both parents went cold with the shock. The face was so pained, drained and pale, eyes searching deeply into their souls as this apparition studied their terrified faces. Before both of their eyes, the girl vanished, completely into nothing. The wife fainted with the sheer fright, and moments later, their daughter emerged from the gift shop, perplexed as to what on earth all the fuss was about. The American family was so alarmed, they left the castle the moment the wife recovered and vowed never to return again. Whatever mysteries lurk in this castle, one thing is for sure. They have no intention of departing.